number for Cape Breton, Canso. Thank you very, uh, thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Mr. Speaker. My uh, big fan of mine, the uh, member from Charlottetown, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, the bill we debate here today, C-525, is yet another piece of conservative anti-labor legislation that will be used to try to turn back the clock on labor relations in this country. Both myself and my party oppose this legislation as written. I want to talk today about why this bill is bad labor relations legislation, why it's undemocratic at its core, and why it's not needed, and simply a solution in search of a problem. Mr. Speaker, the decision by the House to either pass or defeat this bill will come down to whether we believe it upholds the principles inherent in making good labor laws through a legitimate process. A process that's driven by groups directly affected, employers and unions, through a real consultative and consensus building process that's based on the principles of balance, fairness, and mutual respect. I remember back the last bill that we had, almost no conservative members in the House stood for the principles in another anti-labor conservative bill, Bill C-377, that was passed in this House earlier this year. It took a small group of conservative senators, led by Senator Hugh Siegel, to stand with all my liberal Senate colleagues to oppose this bill in the Senate. Today, and in the coming weeks as we debate C-525, I ask my, ch my conservative colleagues opposite to have the courage to uphold these principles of what's right, not what they're being told is right by the Prime Minister's office. Mr. Speaker, C-525 impacts on thousands of employers and approximately 600,000 employees within the federal jurisdiction. 600,000 people who have the right to ensure we as, political, uh, as politicians respect principles inherent in, to creating fair and balanced labor relation laws for them and their employers. We are fortunate that the current federal labor, labor system is well respected and supported by both unions and employers. Why? Because it's a result of a genuine and proven consultative and consensus process that's been followed for decades for amending the Labor Code. There are clear examples of thoughtful, balanced, and independent reviews of the Labor Code. The last major consultative review of the Labor Code occurred in 1995, and the subsequent report, Striking a Balance, is authored by Andrew Sims. The Sims report has led, uh, was led by a three-person panel of highly regarded neutrals and involved seven months of research and consultation. In that report, Mr. Sims outlined the guiding principles that served the review, including that the existing Canada Labor Code basically continues to serve its constituencies well. That stability is desirable and pendulum-like changes to the code do not serve the best interests of the parties or the public. And finally, that consensus between the parties is the best basis for advocating legislative change. Basically, Mr. Sims said that if the labor laws are to be changed, it, it should be changed first because there's a demonstrated need due to the legislation no longer working for the serving the public's best interest. Or second, it should be changed on a consensus basis. I asked the House whether it believes C-525 meets these criteria or is based on those principles that employers and unions currently respect and agree upon. The Sims report went on to talk about the dangers of politicizing labor laws. And I think that's what we're seeing here, Mr. Speaker. 
And I want to quote from the Sims report. Throughout, and, 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 and to quote, throughout our deliberations, we heard both labor and management comment on the need for stability in our labor legislation. Both sides were reacting to what they view as excessive experimentation in the labor law reforms of a number of provinces. Some would push the pendulum one way, some would push it the other way. However, the concern identified by both sides is that the pendulum should not be pushed too far or too frequently. To do so destroys the predictability and underlying credibility upon which an effective system depends." End quote. The Sims report was a true consultative review of the labor code. Can anyone in this house say the process we are following that would make a significant change to the code is either thoughtful or balanced and based on the wishes of the people affected? In order for labor legislation to be effective, it must be driven and implemented by the stakeholders, including employers, unions, and the government through a real consultative process, not by private members' bills that are based solely on political motives. The question has to be asked, who do we think is driving this bill? Who do we think is driving this bill? I've talked to labor groups like the CLC and employers groups like FEDCO, and I can tell you it's neither of those groups. <laughs> they believe both saying that the way to, to make changes to the labor code is through consultation and consensus. So who's driving the bill if not the two direct parties that are involved in this? the two parties whose lives will be changed. Obviously, those people who care little about employers, those who care little about unions in the federal sector, uh, neither want. If my conservative friends don't listen to me, I hope they'll listen to people who are directly affected by this legislation. Because make no mistake, Mr. Speaker, C-525 makes a substantive change to federal labor laws. It fundamentally changes the rights of workers to how they can unionize, replacing a card check system with a mandatory vote system. But not the standard vote system, not the standard vote system used by a number of provinces where a union needs only 50% plus one. No, instead they're a grossly undemocratic process that would count anyone who did not vote as saying no. What democratic principle is this based on? Mr. Speaker, their true intentions could not be further from hollowed words that they've expressed. Let's be frank, it's about one thing and one thing only, discouraging unionization, plain and simple. C-525 would change the rules from forming and, uh, for forming and dissolving a union from a majority process to a minority-driven process, making certifying unions more difficult while decertifying unions more easy. The past decades have witnessed much progress in striking a balance between unions and employers. One of the main reasons of that improvement uh, is the labor law, is labor law, in particular the Canada Labor Code. Have we done this within the Labor Code? I don't think so, Mr. Speaker. Looks that what C-525 looks to bypass is that established process that required adequate consultation and support of the parties. C-525 is not wanted by unions or employers in the federal sector. The only ones who want this is my counterparts across the way. The carefully struck balance in the labor code ought not to be taken for granted, Mr. Speaker. There is simply no need to alter that what is working well. I challenge the government, I challenge my colleagues across the way to have the courage to stand up for consensus, balance, and fairness and vote against this bill. Thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> Resuming debate, the Honorable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Labor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and it's a pleasure.